my name is John Dawson and I'm doing a series of uh, videos on uh, intaglio etching techniques. Uh, this video is uh, concerned with uh, how to do an aqua tint. Uh, there are uh, so many different ways to uh, do an aqua tint. I'm going to be demonstrating about eight to ten different ways to do an aqua tint. And since there are so many, and in order to keep uh, the videos from running way too long, I'm going to do uh, a series of about um, three to four different videos uh, concerning um, the uh, ways to do uh, aqua tint. Well, as I've uh, stated in uh, previous uh, videos, um, these videos on uh, intaglio uh, etching techniques are primarily intended for uh, printmakers who have had at least some basic experience in uh, intaglio printmaking. Uh, that being the case, uh, if they've had any experience at all in doing aqua tint, it is probably with the um, the re resin dust uh, uh, aqua tint. That uh, that particular technique is the oldest and most commonly used technique uh, to do aqua tint. And uh, because of that, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on that. Um, the resin dust uh, technique uh, has been used, I believe, since about 1770. That's uh, around 250 years. So it's been around for quite a long time. The problem with the resin dust is it's not good to breathe it. It's uh, it uh, can be toxic and um, it should you should avoid trying to uh, be in any kind of situation where you're going to uh, to breathe in the resin dust. So I have uh, uh, two different um, uh, ways to apply the resin dust that um, uh, hopefully will reduce the uh, resin dust in the air. Now to begin with you as you if you have any experience with this at all you probably already know you put the resin dust in a uh, nylon stocking and you're going to need uh, a couple of uh, 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 gloves and it's probably helpful also to have a long sleeve shirt on so you don't get it all over your your body and your skin the other thing that you're going to or should have and i'm sure we're all familiar with these by now is a mask uh, you could use this kind of mask or the uh, the the heavy duty canine I think they're called uh, masks are also of course very good so you should really have a mask on regardless of what uh, technique you're using to apply the uh, the resin dust put the plate in the bottom of a large cardboard box then pat the uh, nylon stocking with the resin in it over the plate the idea is to keep uh, the dust from circulating around the room when you get at the end of uh, having the plate covered. We're going to put a piece of cardboard over the top to keep the dust from circulating any further. Okay, this, uh, this particular way of applying the rosin dust uh, requires uh, getting a strainer, uh, just a simple strainer you can get probably at any grocery store. Um, you need to do a fairly large one. And we're going to take some cheesecloth. And the cheesecloth has a couple of plies to it. So we're going to to um, divide that so it's just one one ply uh, cut a section of it off then we're going to put that in the strainer like this and then I usually tape it down with a little bit of scotch tape to uh, keep it from slipping now we're going to put uh, the rosin dust inside the strainer and then we're going to apply it by tapping it or shaking it over the plate and I'm going to demonstrate that. Well spoon some of the uh, powdered rosin into the uh, strainer with the uh, cheesecloth and then break it up all the little lumps that you can before you, uh, you begin and then if you just shake it over the uh, top of the plate the little the dust will settle uh, or you can tap uh, the side of the um, the strainer and uh, the uh, dust particles will fall 
down onto the um, onto the plate. Now this might take a little bit of practice, and if uh, you're not happy with the results the first time, you can just simply take the plate, wipe it off, and uh, and do it over again. This is an example of the aqua tint done with the uh, nylon stocking. And uh, this is an example of the aqua tint done with the uh, strainer uh, technique. The, um, the second one is uh, slightly different, it might be just a little bit more coarse than the first one, but they're pretty similar. Okay, uh, once the uh, rosin dust is uh, distributed on the plate, whatever method to, that you uh, use to do that, um, as you probably know, you have to put the uh, plate on a hot plate and melt the uh, little particles of uh, resin dust so that they adhere to the plate. Um, resin dust uh, melts at um, 235 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about, uh, about 112 degrees Celsius. So once uh, the, um, all the resin dust is melted and adhered to the plate, then you're going to apply whatever stop out uh, varnish or hard ground that you want to apply to it to stop out the areas you don't want to, uh, to etch and you're ready to put it in the acid. Well, I'm gonna do a, uh, a spray paint aqua tint. Um, you're uh, probably going to need uh, a couple of cans of spray paint. It's probably best to have two colors and I'll explain that uh, a little later. Um, Concerning the color that you want to get, uh, I do my uh, etchings on zinc plates, and so uh, dark colors like gray or black or even brown don't really show up uh, very well on the zinc plates. So I, I get uh, a bright color like uh, uh, red or, or yellow. For a second color, you'd want something that's contrasting to uh, red or yellow. On a copper plate, um, the bright colors don't probably show up very well, and I think uh, probably um, dark colors like black or blue would be uh, best if you're using a uh, copper plate. Now concerning um, the, the spray paint, uh, they used to, uh, the older cans, uh, up until a few years ago, came with a, uh, uh, a spray nozzle like this. In fact, just about every a uh, spray can of any kind came with a, a spray nozzle similar to this. And they had been using it for years and years. They're, they're replaceable and so forth. Um, but a few years ago, almost all the paint companies um, changed to a different kind of nozzle. Um, Ace, I'm sorry, uh, Rust-Oleum has a nozzle like this. Um, it's probably great for if you're going to paint a chair or a table or something, but um, this particular nozzle does not work well for what we want to do, which is to create a fine mist. The paint comes out too heavy and too thick and too fast. So uh, I wouldn't get uh, Rust-Oleum to do uh, the kind of thing that you want to do on the plate. Now, Ace, Ace Hardware, has a different kind of nozzle. And I believe uh, Krylon also has the same nozzle. I haven't tried the Krylon, but I'm pretty sure it's pretty much the same since the nozzle is, uh, looks like the same nozzle as this one. Um, this particular uh, kind of nozzle works very well. It actually works better than the old ones. You can get a nice uh, fine mist, which is what you want to do uh, on the plate. Now, um, the real advantage to doing a spray aqua tint is that you, um, you don't ever need to put it on a hot plate. Uh, once you have the plate sprayed and you do uh, whatever stop out you want to do, you can just put it directly into the acid. And the other big advantage is in doing uh, something like a sugar lift, it's a very simple way to get a, an aqua tint onto your uh, sugar lift images. The big disadvantage is it's really something you shouldn't do inside. 
Uh, if you're going to do it inside, you really should have a very well ventilated room and probably wear a mask. It lingers in the air for a long time, and I don't know if it's toxic or not, but it's probably not good for you. So you really uh, should do it outside. Now the problem with doing it outside, of course, is that um, any little breeze or so forth can disrupt the mist that you're trying to get on the plate. Here in the desert southwest, I'm able to do things outside very easily since the weather is pretty nice from about October to the middle of May. So I, uh, I have a solution for doing uh, the, um, the spray aquatint outside and I'm going to uh, show that to you now. Okay, well to um, protect the plate and the spray from uh, any kind of breeze or wind, uh, I built this box and uh, you simply uh, place the pl plate inside the box. I usually put something underneath the top of it like a 2 by 4 to put it at a slight angle and then you can use the spray paint inside the box and uh, hopefully protect it from any uh, little zephyr or any little breeze, any wind that um, might be uh, in the atmosphere at the time so that you can get a nice fine spray onto the plate. Now this would be a lot of trouble to go to if you're only going to do um, a spray aquatint once or twice or very rarely. So you know there's, uh, there's yet another option. Well you can do pretty much the same thing with a large cardboard box and uh, what you want to do is uh, to cut a section out of the uh, side or top of the box. You don't want to cut it all the way off and weaken the, uh, the structure of the box. And then um, you, know, you put your plate inside the box and as I said it helps to put a, a 2 by 4 like that, so sort of, kind of at an angle. And then hopefully that would protect um, the plate against the wind so that you could uh, uh, get a nice fine mist on the plate. Okay, and in applying, applying the uh, spray paint, uh, you want to do uh, uh, fairly short, quick bursts. Uh, you want to keep the uh, can a fair distance away from the plate and uh, just simply go very lightly across the plate numerous times until you think you have enough uh, of a uh, fine mist settling on the plate to create a, a, a nice dot pattern. And then the other thing that you should have and probably really need is a magnifying glass. Then you can in inspect the plate and see what the dot pattern really looks like and if you think you need to, uh, to add more in any particular uh, section of the plate. Now the, um, the way the uh, the mist should look is uh, on uh, this uh, little uh, white piece of paper that um, I'm going to show you. You want to look for a, uh, a light mist to settle on the plate that'll uh, look more or less like this and should give you a, a nice uh, aqua tint. What you don't want is to get hot spots like this on the plate, uh, which uh, probably won't uh, etch very well at all. Then, uh, if you get a hot spot on the um, um, on the plate, uh, which means a concentration of uh, uh, of paint, um, if you get that in a, in a place where you're not going to etch it anyway, it really doesn't matter, of course. If you get it in a place where you want it to etch, then you're probably going to have to clean the plate off and do it all over again. Um, the plate cleans off uh, with alcohol. When the, um, the etching is done and you've put it in the acid and so forth and you're cleaning the plate to clean everything off, it, uh, it also comes off uh, with alcohol. A friend of mine gave me a method for getting a very nice velvety black using uh, the spray paint aquatint method. And uh, this is where you're probably going to want a, 
uh, or need a second color. Um, first, you uh, you spray the um, the plate with uh, the uh, spray paint. Uh, put it in the acid uh, for about eight minutes, and you take it out again, um, dry it off a little bit, and then add a second spray of uh, spray paint. Put it back in the acid for another eight minutes, and you take it out again, blot it dry a little bit, um, spray it a third time, and then uh, you put it back into the acid for five minutes, take it out again, and blot it dry a little bit. And now this is where you're probably going to want to change colors because you wouldn't be able to see the spray any longer on the plate. Um, so you want to change the colors and spray it one more time. Uh, put it back in the, uh, the acid for another five minutes. And then we're going to do it one more time. You take it out, um, blot it dry a little bit, and then uh, spray the, uh, the plate one last time again with the, uh, the second color so that you can see it better. And you put it back in the acid for uh, another five minutes. Um, I've used this uh, a number of times and you get a really nice velvety black. So um, you might give that a try. Well, I'll show you an example of how the uh, spray paint Aquatint uh, actually looks in a uh, finished print. This is a print entitled uh, Lady Vanishes. And uh, this is a detail of the print uh, where you can better see how the Aquatint actually looks. Well, if, uh, if you want to do a spray aqua tint and you don't want to use the paint inside and it's not really possible to do it outside, um, another thing that works very well is hairspray. The hairspray comes out in a very nice fine mist. It's uh, designed to use, uh, obviously, inside and close to your face and so forth. Um, the big problem with the hairspray is it's clear and it's nearly impossible to see it on the plate. So I uh, have a method uh, that I'm going to demonstrate here in a minute to, uh, to use the hairspray that works pretty well. Well, as I said before, the uh, hairspray is very hard to see on, uh, on the plate. So this is a method uh, you can use that works pretty well. You, you just do two uh, quick passes over the plate one back and forth. Um, a swatch of uh, the um, hairspray is about two to two and a half inches wide. So you want to move down about two inches and do it again. And then you keep doing that all the way down the plate until um, you have uh, the hairspray applied to uh, the whole image. Well, uh, because you can't see the, um, the hairspray very well on the plate, it's very tempting to go back and add another shot onto the plate. Um, if you do that, you're more than likely going to turn the aqua tin into a stop out varnish and it won't, nothing will, <laughs> nothing will etch. It's just going to come out blank. Uh, so, um, just uh, trust the way I showed, just do it a couple passes and, and uh, then uh, it, do whatever stop out you need to do. And um, uh, it works pretty well. Uh, and here is uh, an example of, um, of uh, how it looks once it's printed up. Uh, this is from uh, uh, a detail of the, uh, the plate that I was uh, actually doing in the uh, demo. Well, as you can see from this uh, detail of the print that I was doing, the uh, hairspray aqua tint produces a very nice, fine, very even uh, aqua tint. Um, the uh, paint spray aqua tint actually comes out uh, more textured. So if you're looking for a nice, really well, fine, even aqua tint, for, this works uh, pretty this well. first video on uh, aqua tint. Um, I'm going to be doing about uh, three or four more covering uh, 
everything from uh, salt to sandpaper and, uh, and a little more. So uh, uh, here's uh, some examples of uh, my own intaglio prints and the uh, web address for my Facebook page and uh, my website. And you can also uh, subscribe to other videos of mine on YouTube.